Hey guys, it's Spectre and welcome to episode 3 of how to make a montage series. If you haven't watched the past episodes, I will leave a link in the description for them. In this episode we will learn how to film great quality campus or cinematics and all the settings that I use in order to achieve this. Now as a personal advice, your cinematics filming should be done after you've picked a song for your montage where you already synchronize the kills with the song. This is helpful because you will already know what scene you want to film and how long it should be. You shouldn't abuse campets just for the sake of it, because you should only use them to fill out your montage for syncing purposes. In order to make cinematics you will need HLA third party software and some movie making settings that I have in my config. I'm leaving a link in the description for both, so you can download them. Let's start by running the HLA program. So we're gonna launch CSGO with this. I'm just gonna disable the uh, resolution right here because I already have 1920 and uh, by 1080 in CSGO. Also if there is an update available for HLAE make sure to download it because you might have issues where the program will not work so this is uh, pretty much done each time CSGO releases a patch. So if you enter HLE, you will notice right here on the bottom, it's going to tell you that an update is available. So make sure to download it before filming anything. Okay, so now we're in CSGO. Same thing as before, make sure to go offline in Steam. And let's go to video settings and uh, tune everything to the max or maximum quality. The brightness is not really important because this is what you see like it, it's only seen on my monitor so in the video it shouldn't be affected by any means. Right now it's a bit darker for me but in the video it's not noticeable so it doesn't matter which setting you have here. But for the rest of the settings put everything on high. And you should have a decent PC for this, but it's up to you like what kind of quality you want from your videos. Okay, I'm gonna apply. So let's get in with the demo. It was... My demo was me rush first round as far as I remember. Okay, I'm gonna put my volume to zero. Okay, it was zero. So, right now, I need to exec my movie making config because I have some settings that will help me with movie making. This config will be in the description below, by the way. Okay, let's go to the round where the action happens. It was the first round. This is the same demo as before. Alright, so I paused the demo for a bit to explain something. When you're filming cinematics, you need to understand the concept of demo ticks, which is right here. As you can see, I'm on tick 1900, 19,000, sorry. And the demo has a total tick number of 360k. The tick right here, 19,129, represents, it's just a measuring unit for time and represents this exact moment where I'm in balcony right now. This is pretty much needed because the campets you will create are based on demo ticks, so you will have to play with ticks for a bit to understand how campets work. So before going forward, you need to know a couple commands. Some of them are listed in my movie making config, but I will try to explain them right here. If you want to start a camp path or a cinematic, you need to make sure that you have this enabled. So you need to type mirf camp path, enabled one. It says the campet is enabled, but uh, I don't have any uh, campet set yet. You will understand what this means in a moment. The second command would be 
how to add a campus like a point in time and a position to fill. So this is pretty much this setting right here. Mirror campus add. And if I type mirror campus print, it's gonna say that I've added the campus on tick 19,129. And these are some coordinates for position. So that's how you add the campus with this command. Make it easier for you, you should bind this command on a key that you prefer. I have it set on mouse 5, I think. So you type bind mouse 5 near camp of add. And right now you can resume the action. And each time you want to set a campus, you press the bind you just configured in console, right? And you can just spam it and you will see when you enable the preview, it's gonna look exactly what you've configured it to look like. Let me pause for a second. There is a setting here that allows you to see what kind of campus you, you added. So if you have my movie making config, you can just type print and you will see these, these are all the campus that I've added, like 22, 20, no, actually 23 spots that I've pressed the bind. And my camera will go through each of these spots, starting from the point zero, and it will move to the latest campus that I've set here, number 22. If you want to see this, there's a setting, like to see the actual path of the camera. There's a setting called Mirf Campus uh, Draw, I think. Yeah, Draw. Mirf Campus Draw Enabled 1. And this will show you the uh, path of your cameras. Let me resume so I can move. This is the actual path of the cameras at a certain point in time that I just created by spamming my keybind I configured in the console, right? So we started from here. As you can see, it's already bad because it goes through the walls and you need to avoid this as much as possible because it's just not nice to go through walls when you're filming something and you want it to be good quality. So yeah, if you want to see this in action, you need to pause. Let's disable the uh, drawing of the camera pads and type print again and see this is the first tick where we press the bind, right? And you can just do demo, go to tick 19,000. So like 130 ticks before. And if we resume, this is our camera path that we created. I guess it's okay. It looks nice. It was a bit fast though, but we'll fix that with the setting that we actually need to film in slow motion again, but we're not gonna use the demo UI tool for this because there's something more powerful and campus should have like way more FPS than just a thousand. I even filmed them, I even filmed them in 3.5k FPS. Let me show you my FPS right now. So it's 270 because... Yeah, my FPS is a bit... <laughs> It's a bit low this time, I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Let me exec the config again to make sure that I have all the settings. Yeah, for some reason it's low. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna type a command that will film everything at a steady FPS. So I can pick if I wanted to film in 1K FPS or 2K or 3K or whatever. So right now let me show you the command I was talking about. 
if you type this command post frame rate you can see it's set to zero because it lets the demo ui manipulate fps by either going to 100 percent speed or 25 percent speed or whatever but if i type host frame rate 2400 you can see that now my frame rate is at, at steady 2400 uh, frames per second and if i go back to the tick before the actual filming happens the before the actual uh, Cam pads happen, you will see that it goes in slow motion, but keeping the steady 2400 FPS and to be very slow this time because it needs to get 2.4k FPS on each, uh, on each frame. Yeah, what you need to understand from this is, this is the speed of this action that's happening right here, is pretty much related to your computer performance. If you have a low-end laptop, if you're gonna type post frame rate 2.4k, I think it's gonna take like hours to film it, right? Because if you barely get 20 FPS, imagine how hard it would be for your machine to get 2.4k FPS. And it would be very very slow or even impossible. But you can even do post frame rate, I don't know, 600 and film it like this. If you have a low budget PC, and it will still look great because you can even apply some slow motion to it. I think it's decent enough, but if you want to go the extra mile, just use 2.4K or even 3.5K FPS. If you're wondering where I got these values with 3.5K, uh, I did watch some uh, tutorials in the past and there was a professional movie maker, movie maker that was using this setting, 3.5K. Okay, alright, now that we've played a bit with these settings, you need to know a couple of things more. If you want to go specific with cam pads and everything and not create them randomly, you can do that. Let me show the camera pads again. So mirror of cam path, draw enable one. And right now I'm, my current tick rate is 19,909 so if I want to correct a camera let's say I want to correct number one right here because you can see that it goes through a wall or even uh, number zero I can correct that by pressing pause and with my print command I see that number zero is right here a tick rate 19,130. So I can go to that tick by using this command demo go to tick 1900, sorry, 19,130. And I'm going to that exact point in time, but I cannot move because I need an extra setting which is MIRF input camera. And right now I can change the camera that is number zero and I can place it wherever I want. Looks like it got a bit bugged out because sometimes you need to type like a tick lower than the actual tick. So this means let me remove number two because this is the one that's creating us issues. Oh no, number two is fine, number one is the problem. So number one would be this one. And there was a command, me of path remove and ID one. Okay, we, re we removed it now. And let's go to tick. 
I thought I was going here, but let's lower it for a bit. 129. And it should change. Yeah. It's going to change the exact tick. So I need to go one number lower. Okay. So this is how you correct a camera that you've picked. And by the way, I have two binds in my uh, in my movie making config. So for the square brackets, these right here, I binded post frame rate 200 and post frame rate 2400. I needed these binds just for when I'm in MIRV input camera, so I can press the left bracket and I can move faster a bit to pick my uh, my desired cam path, right? If you use MIRV input camera, you can even use a set of commands that I will list on the screen right now. Like you can press Z and you rotate the uh, camera angle or X to rotate on uh, clockwise. And there are some uh, other, uh, other binds on the num keys like 8 goes forward, 4 goes left, 6 right, 1 goes a bit back. 9 goes up and uh, 3 goes down. Okay, so <laughs> now if you resume, you will see that it's a bit trickier to move the mouse because you don't have it right now because of MIRV input camera. So you need to exit MIRV input camera by pressing escape. So it's gonna stay on my, uh, on my zero uh, path right here, which is this one we configured. And I'm gonna press my bind for 2400 FPS. You can see it goes slowly, instantly. Like if I jump from 200 to 2400, it just goes slowly. You don't need to play with these binds. I'm doing it just for demonstration purposes. So yeah, looks decent enough. Oh, uh, what I don't like about this is that nothing special, you know? Uh, like, it's just how you see it as a spectator. But if you want to make that even better, you need to type mirfof and you need to play with this for a bit. Like currently my field of view is 90, but if I do mirfof 40, you will see that it gets this zoomed in effect, which I believe it looks way better. But this means if I go back to my first cam path, so demo go to tick. 1900 sorry 19,000 <laughs> I always mess this up for some reason okay let's resume this is gonna mess up all my uh, cameras that I did until now because it's gonna zoom in and it could go through walls or even look nice by mistake you know yeah, it's a bit shaky there but the end result, you can see right here that it's way better. It's it's like a cinematic, you know, zoomed in. This effect it, it looks uh, it looks awesome to me. And if you do a slow motion in Vegas for this, that's even better. Okay, so I think we've settled with our campus, and I'll go back. So if you want to start filming it. You need to do CL draw hot 0, hide your FPS always, net graph 0, and we need to hide the path itself. So it was mirf camper draw 0. No, draw enabled 0. Okay. And you resume, and you can film it like this, guys. Let me try frame rate, which is okay. Yeah, you can film this and it's totally fine. But if you want to go, well, looks like my blood went out there because I pressed the bind that I used. If you want to do more specific campus and not just 
move randomly with the input camera. Let me clear the canvas for a bit. Canvas clear. So this means it cleared everything that I just configured. And I'll go back to where the action happens or uh, uh, starts at least. Let me resume. And I'm moving randomly. Okay, I use my binds here. Let's say that I want to film, I want to start filming like this. So I can add the camp up right here by pressing my bind or typing mirror camp of add. As you can see, I have an uh, echo command right here. When I'm pressing the bind, it says camp added. So I added my first camp here, which is a tick rate 19,350. With input camera enabled, mirror input camera. Okay, I can now move. And if I want to be really specific with campers, I can do them from 100 ticks, like for each 100 ticks forward. So I can go to demo, go to tick 19,450. And with input camera enabled, I can move. Let me speed it up. Okay, I can move here. And I will press the bind here. And now you will see that I have two campets and I can go 100 ticks more to 550. And I need to move again by using my binds from the num keys. Let's say I do this and I'll rotate it a bit more. And I added a new campus here. Print. Yep, I have three. By the way, for your uh, campus to work, like to, uh, for your camera to start moving automatically, you will need at least four uh, campus added. So I have three, I kind of need one more. So let's go to 650. And let's say I want to move it. I don't know. It's up to you to be creative, guys. I'm just showing you how you can do it. And you can spend hours on this or even minutes. It's totally up to you what you want to create. Because this is all about content creation. So let's say I'm going to do it here. Like make it move a bit backwards. It, it kind of, <laughs> it could be funky because let's see how the path looks like. Mirror and path row enabled one so my speeding it up a bit okay kind of lost myself here okay so i'm starting here so yeah it, it got messed up because the angles my campus need to take to, in order to film this so i need to fix number two or either uh, come with come up with another solution for uh, number three by the way you have number three max because you start from zero so let's fix number three print 19,652 yeah it's actually the the tick rate that I'm on right now it's really helpful if you do your campus with draw enabled from the start because you can see what angle you take like if I go a bit too far you will see that this arch right here it's going to be like more deep into the wall let me see is it good okay looks decent going through this it's it's not gonna be the best canted guys, but whatever. All you wanna do is just to learn, right? Okay, let's do it like this. Hopefully, it's okay. So I added more campets 
but because I was on the same tick rate, it kept editing number 3 until uh, I was happy with it. So before checking it how it looks like, you need to press escape, get out of uh, mirror input camera mode and you need to go the first tick. Mirf, not mirf, demo, go to tick, first tick but minus 100 or something just for it to be able to start properly and now let's resume okay so this is how it looks like yeah it turns a bit and then it tries to show something here like uh, if you're happy with the progress so far you can see once my uh, my camera reached number 3 because I didn't have any spots further it just randomly stopped and uh, took me to position 0 but if I type print looks like my last campus is at 19,652 so I can leave this moving for a little Like 300 ticks more and I need to enable input camera again and I can add one more camera here so just to make sure it doesn't randomly stop at the end but it goes through a wall for some reason Just be that's because it's way too close to the wall. So I'll place my number 4 here. And I need to modify number 3, which was number 3, 19,650. So demo, go to pick 19,650. And I need to modify this a bit so the arch doesn't go through the wall right here. Let's see. Yeah, goes straight into the air, but as I mentioned, it's up to you. Now through the wall again. Okay, I think this looks actually good. Let's check it. I need to go to the start and press escape to disable input camera and let's resume. It doesn't actually need to be perfect because you can decide which parts you are bringing it you are bringing in to your uh, uh, final product to your montage so you can film a bit from here and you can take a bit from there and that's why it doesn't need to be like 100% everything perfect our camera looks actually good Yeah, you can even like zoom in more in Vegas if you want to do that. Okay, yeah guys, so that's pretty much it. Well, right now what you have to do is just disable the draw. Draw enabled zero. And you go to the starting point and you start filming it. Alright, so for the sake of this tutorial, I just filmed a bit more uh, camera paths or campus or cinematics. And I started with 19,350. So let's film that as well to see how it looks. Going back, pressing escape to make sure I'm out of input camera because my campus will not work. Okay. And for the sake of this tutorial again, I'm gonna use a frame rate of frame rate of a thousand FPS just to make it a bit more faster. But normally I would use 
2400. Enabled one. Okay, my campus was disabled. Let me go back. So I was saying I just randomly went with the camera and clicked my bind a lot. This is the first one we did. And I continued with uh, some more campus right here. Print. Yeah, it's gonna film the players a bit as well. It goes a bit through the wall, but it's okay because I'm not gonna show that in the end product. Just how I headshot these two guys. And after that I film my, uh, my character a bit. Okay, so I'm uh, pretty happy with that and I'll jump a bit into Vegas and uh, edit this clip for a bit so you, guys, so you guys can see how the end product could look like with only these campus right here that I filmed. It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Now I know that's not one of my best edits, but I've done it quickly just for demonstration purposes of what you can achieve with what we've learned today. Next week we'll continue the series with basic editing where we will learn how to edit in Vegas Pro. This turned out to be a way longer video than I expected, but if I kept your attention until this point I want to thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions please comment below and I will answer to all of you guys. Also don't forget to drop me a like and a subscribe to my channel as this would help me a lot. See you in the next video. Kids screaming in